Hey friends, welcome to Hot News. Hope you're enjoying whatever day it is today because I've lost track of time. We have disc plates. If you want to check them out, use the link in the video description at usdisplate.com forward slash UFD Tech Official. Enter UFD to save 15% off of the best floating metal prints out there. They only float when they're here though. Anyways, let's talk about something that's serious and dangerous and uh, might just uh, hurt you. How does the name zombie load sound? Kind of disgusting, right? Yeah, I didn't know. I don't want that. What about Fallout? Uh, yeah, that's just about as bad as Zombie Load. And then Riddle. It, those are the three of the names of the latest issues that are going on with Intel CPUs using the speculative execution exploit that Intel has baked into their chips. Previously, we've heard of Spectre and Meltdown, which use speculative execution to mess with the CPUs because of uh, how it stored things in the memory. Well, apparently with zombie load, fallout, and riddle, they store things in between the threads and it's a bad thing. I don't know the super details of this. I just know that it's it's pretty bad, my friends. Like with the name zombie load, fallout, and riddle, it sounds scary, but Intel says no. It's called microarchitectural data sampling, MDS. That's the name of this set of exploits that's going on right now. Obviously, Intel trying to downplay what could be a huge security vulnerability built into people's actual processors, into the physical hardware, not into Windows, which you can just get Linux for. Linux solves Windows, <laughs> didn't you know? It's like the cure. Anyways, it's so bad that Intel is actually recommending that if you're on below eighth gen CPUs, that you disable hyper-threading altogether on your CPUs because hyper-threading or simultaneous multi-threading which hyperthreading is a brand name of that. That's how the hacks or the exploits or are used. So disabling hyperthreading is the only way to guarantee that it's not going to happen. And Intel has also released a microcode update for the uh, BIOSes to make sure that your CPUs are no longer vulnerable. But again, one of the biggest ways that Intel says that you have to do it is by disabling hyperthreading on everything below an eighth gen processor. So if you're on a 7700K, sorry, you only got four cores, no threads right now now. It's bad. This is bad news bears. There's a lot to get into here, but for the most part, if you don't want your CPU, your computer to be vulnerable to very possibly uh, bad exploits, you, you really need to take this seriously because things can happen where they can take the data from the CPU at near real time and they can pull things like your passwords or whatever your website you're visiting. Like they could have all of your data by just the fact that your CPU is vulnerable. AMD came out in a public statement saying that we, at least as AMD processors, which use simultaneous multi-threading as well, those, their CPUs are not vulnerable to the three different ones, zombie load, uh, fallout, and riddle. So that's good, AMD's fine. Intel is not, hyper-threading is gone, and in fact, it looks like Intel is really trying to downplay everything that's happening here, whereas the rest of the people who came out with this were like, take this super seriously, because Intel released benchmarks that show that there's very minimal impacts from the microcode update, but that's because they're using benchmarks that really don't benefit from hyper-threading. So they're showing that in Sysmark 2014, that if you have hyper-threading disabled, you only lose 7% performance, uh, except for like games take advantage of threads. Other things take advantage of threads. They're using the worst possible benchmarks to kind of show that everything's fine. Oh, and 3 d Mark Skydiver, you know that one that everybody's benchmarking their 9900K for? Because that's the, that's the thing that's on this slide. 9900K with hyper-threading hyper disabled. Yeah, everybody's testing Skydiver. That's only a 1% performance difference. Jeez. And that's on top of the fact that one of the researchers that came out and talked about these vulnerabilities said that Intel actually tried to bribe them to kind of downplay the actual issue that's at hand here, first offering them $40,000 as a reward to allegedly get them to downplay the severity of the vulnerability. And when the researchers were like, not nah, fam, that's shady. Intel is like, okay, how's $80,000? And they were just like, ah, sounds like we have more integrity than you. And they also declined it. And that's when all of these vulnerabilities came out. So this is a rough situation. Apple has also come out and shown users how to change what they need to on the Mac in order to prevent this exploit being available on their computers. But you can imagine for CPUs that were sold on the two core four thread basis, those are now worse 
so much worse because two cores is hardly worth it as it is. Having two additional threads to get four threads is like, okay, yeah, thanks for a little bit of performance boost. But now that you're back down to two cores, like you could have spent less money on something that has, anyways. My biggest frustration here is that Intel is saying disabling hyper threading is no big deal. Everything's gonna be fine. Then why do you sell a 9900K and a 9700K? Once just hyper threaded, if it's not a big deal, why would you sell two different SKUs, Intel? Huh? You're talking out both sides of your rear, okay? Your rear's on fire with lies from the pit of Balrogs and a flamethrower from Elon Musk. It's all bad. So, if you can't tell, this is bad news bears. This is a huge problem. And not only that, it makes Intel CPUs kind of crap now, especially if you had hyper threading because it has to be disabled if you want to protect your CPU. That's rough. Like that's one of the things that Intel had over AMD for the longest time was that it could have better cores and threads. And it doesn't look like uh, Intel was the right way to go overall. Obviously, one of the things that my conspiracy brain says to myself is yes, Brett, they found the bugs and the exploits for what Intel is doing, but we'll find it later on for AMD. They're not necessarily vulnerable to the things that Intel is vulnerable to, but that doesn't mean they're not vulnerable. So just because something's more secure at one thing than another doesn't mean that so that's rough. Intel is in a rough time right now. They can't make 5G modems. They can't produce 10 nanometer CPUs. And apparently they borked the gork a while ago when it came to making sure that their CPUs were secure. And they decided, hey, you know what would speed things up but make them more vulnerable and dangerous? Yeah, let's do that. You know what else is delicious? Censorship. Let's talk about that. Obviously that sarcasm. Can't you see the sarcasm drooling out of my mouth right now? Anyways, China has apparently banned Wikipedia completely. Wow. In all languages. Wikipedia is gone. Apparently, uh, the company that owns Wikipedia says that they were not notified of the fact that they were gonna be censored, but now Wikipedia, the, the way to inform people and to cheat on your papers and you don't use Wikipedia as a source, you use the sources of Wikipedia as a source, that's all gone. Dang, we could get into political stuff, but I'm not gonna, because we're gonna talk about President Trump next, and he declares a national emergency for the United States to protect against foreign espionage. Espionage, my French. Apparently, President Trump signed an executive order that is to deal with the threat posed by the unrestricted restricted acquisition or use in the United States of information and communications technology supplied by persons owned by, controlled by, or subject to the jurisdiction or direction of foreign adversaries. A lot of people seem to think that this is an executive order that's taking place straight aim at companies like Huawei and ZTE, thanks to the fact that there's been just a huge fight going on between the US government and those companies for the longest time, even with uh, the US intelligence agency saying that Huawei is spying on you for the Chinese government. And then a lot of people in the tech community is saying, where's your proof? And then they're saying, you can't handle the proof. You can't handle the truth. That's not what, how it's going down, but that's how I imagine it in my brain. So yeah, executive order, national emergency, foreign interests stealing your stuff, but it's okay as long as they're a domestic company. Okay, Facebook getting your stuff. The reptilians are American. We all know this. It's a fact of life. Like the fact that water is blue or wet. I don't know, one of those. And then in another fact of life, you know how people don't pay for Adobe Suite. You know, a lot of people are still just sitting on, uh, what is it, CS6, CS5 from ages ago, and some people have uh, cracked versions of uh, Premiere and all that kind of stuff. Well, apparently, even if you're a paying member of Adobe Creative Cloud, if you choose not to update, they will threaten legal action against you. This is coming out after Adobe sent out emails to a whole bunch of people who haven't updated in a while. They sent an email that says, we have recently discontinued certain older versions of Creative Cloud applications. You are no longer licensed to use them. And then saying that, uh, yeah, it's a bad thing. But the best comment that I read on this is, <laughs> it's funny that Adobe ever thought we were paying for their services in the first place. But you know who's not gonna be paying Ubisoft? People who want pirates, because Skull and Bones has been delayed yet again. The game that was announced in 2017 is not coming out until at least mid of 2020. A lot of people were anticipating 2019, especially since Sea of Thieves launched last year, but Skull and Bones, still not here. And then in case you're in for a good time, a cheap good time, like, 
I'm taking you out on a date or something. I don't know. That's the best joke I got there. Spotify is bringing back its 99 cent premium offer. So Spotify's premium offer gives you three months for 99 cents unless you already had Spotify premium and canceled already. If you canceled before April, then you can get three months for $10, which actually isn't all that terrible with considering one month is about what, seven, eight bucks? Speaking of something that's like seven or eight bucks, Mortal Kombat, they are making another movie. Why? How, why would they do this? Do, doesn't Warner Brothers know that the first Mortal Kombat movie was perfect? It was the Mortal Kombat movie that anybody would want. You got Liu Kang, you got Johnny Cage, you got Sonya, you got Jax. Well, no, that was, that was Mortal Kombat Annihilation with the metal arm. Anyways, the first Mortal Kombat movie was perfect. It doesn't even need a remake or a remaster. This is bogus. How dare they? And how dare I continue any longer? Because that's the end of hot news, my friends. Thank you so much for watching this one. Are you upset about Intel? Are you upset about the Mortal Kombat thing? Are you happy with your life? Let me know down in the comments. Hit the like button if you enjoyed this video. Check out our disc plates at the link in the video description. Also, if you want to support us directly, you can do so over at patreon.com forward slash UFD tech. I'm Brett. Love you too. Magoo. Very.